guys and welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a really long time since I posted anything. I apologize for that. Like I said in the last video, my wedding's coming up, so I've been spending most of my time planning for the wedding, getting stuff done for that. Um, I actually built this big grass wall right here for the wedding. We're gonna do some cool stuff with some flowers and put some signs and stuff on it for people to take pictures at the wedding and things like that. So I've been really busy doing stuff like that. I've not had any time at all to really mess with my car or anything uh, related so um, but today I did end up going getting my heads they have been fully poured and polished now um, I was waiting on the valves I thought needed to be ground down because they stick up a little bit um, in the valve seats but I got a hold of uh, power of racing today and asked them about that and they said it's completely normal um, and that they get that question a lot. So it turns out they don't need cut. Um, so I went ahead and lapped all of them this morning. Um, spent three or four hours just lapping them in both heads. Got them all marked so I know which one goes where. Um, so now there's metal shavings in both heads all over the place from uh, the port and polish work So and the valve grinding. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up both of the heads, get the valves put in, and then hopefully get um, the cams and everything like that put into them and get the heads fully built um, then once that's done I can go ahead and put the heads on the block and then um, I can test fit to make sure that there's going to be good clearance between the pistons and the valves because I got a stroker kit high compression pistons and these high compression valves so I want to make sure there's plenty of clearance between them as the engine turns over then I can uh, put it together and torque it down for the final time get it ready to go in the car um, once again, I'm still just kind of waiting uh, to get it running. I need the AEM Infinity V2 ECU as well as a jumper harness made. Um, and that stuff's gonna be relatively expensive and I don't have money for that at the moment because of my wedding coming up in 18 days, which is pretty awesome. But once the wedding stuff's over um, and I, we get the honeymoon and all that stuff out of the way, once we get back, I should have some money together where we can actually purchase the ECU, get the harness made, and then go from there. Hopefully have this thing running before the snow starts flying, but who knows, we'll see. Um, past all of that, the only things I have left I need to order are some AN um, adapters, essentially for my radiator. I don't know if you guys remember, but uh, Becky's father, Mike, actually welded up the AN fittings onto my water pipe so I can run AN lines for that radiator that's in there. Um, so I just got to get the uh, bungs, essentially, that go onto that radiator to run those lines, and then the AN lines themselves. Um, and then we're basically ready to get going on this. But this morning he actually gave me um, a couple new bottle brackets that I can put in the back of my car because the ones that I have in there now are just, they're flimsy like this, they're junk. So these will be pretty nice to go in there. He gave me this arming switch I'd like to put in the dash somewhere at some point. And uh, yeah, so we got some good stuff coming in for the hatch. Hopefully we'll have it running relatively soon. But for right now, we're gonna go ahead and get these heads cleaned up and hopefully we can uh, get them all put together. All right, so I just sprayed the one of the heads down. I'm getting ready to put this purple power cleaner into this bin. Um, I'm going to dilute it down a little bit with water, but I don't want to dilute it down too much. Um, so I'm going to get this in this bin. I sprayed it down with the hose to get all the metal shavings and stuff out of it. Now I'm going to let it soak in here for a little bit to make sure we get all that crud and stuff out of it. Um, and then that whatever metal shavings might still be left in it will hopefully come out with this. Um, and then while it's soaking, I'll get the other one out and spray it down and then repeat the process here. All right, so I also have these J35 heads laying around from uh, the engine that I used in that Acura MDX, for those of you that remember that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, while my heads are soaking, I'm going to go ahead and pull these ones apart because I'm going to rob some pieces from these because they are in really good condition. As you can see, nothing's really oil stained. So I'm probably going to take both the rocker assemblies and the cams, and then I'm going to use those for my heads. So while mine are soaking out there, I'm going to go ahead and get these pulled apart and uh, rob the pieces that I need off of them. And while I've got it all apart, I've got the rocker assemblies out of the other heads right here. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually lock VTEC on these. Um, I've not seen any other lock VTEC J series, so I'm not really sure um, if it works or doesn't or what the, what the case is with that, but I'm gonna go ahead and try it. Um, so what I did was, if you don't know how VTEC works, inside of these rocker arms here, let's see, make sure you can see this pretty good. Inside of these rocker arms, right here on the opposite side of the rollers, there's actually little pins, little dowel pins inside of these rocker arms. And let me see if I can pull this out. 
So when you get well, the oil pressure raises above whatever RPM your VTEC set at, it'll actually pull these pins out like that and lock the rocker arms together. I don't know if you can see that or not, but um, it'll actually lock the rocker arms together so then it'll just ride on the big lobe of the cam. So in order to lock, the, lock it into VTEC, I'm gonna take these short pins out because there's a short pin inside of this rocker and then the middle one has a longer pin. So I'm gonna take the short pins out replace them with these long pins from the other rocker assemblies and you can see how that doesn't go all the way in which is what we want so then that way we put it together with this one it'll push that pin out and then put this one in and it'll lock all three of the rocker arms together so that way it'll always stay in VTEC and you won't sacrifice any oil pressure to get your VTEC but now all of them are locked together all the time so I'm actually going to do that with all of the rocker arms um, these J-series only have intake VTEC not exhaust VTEC, so I only got to do it on six rocker arms. All right, guys, so I got my head here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and slide the cam in. Make sure it's facing the right way. Go ahead and slide it through. So this is the J35 cam going into the J32 head. I'm going to get it just to about here. Oh. Just kidding, this is the wrong cam belongs in the other head. So I'm going to go grab the other cam and put it in here. All right, we've got the proper cam now. I'm going to slide this guy on in here. There might be a way to tell which cam goes to which head. Honestly, I have no idea how to tell. So um, other than putting it in, realizing that it doesn't line up, and then grabbing the other ones. Like that. So now, before I slide it all the way in, I'm going to get my assembly lube here. I'm going to make sure we've got a good amount on it so that way it can rotate nice and easy and free because there is no oil in here anywhere okay so now we're in i'm going to give it a good spin that way we can make sure that assembly lube gets all the way around in the journals all right so now go ahead and put this back cap back on here all right Okay, not really torquing everything quite yet. I'm just making sure it's snug. All right, so now we'll take and then go ahead and tighten this guy back on. Same thing, don't really need to torque it. Just looking to make it snug. Okay. So actually, before I put the uh, rocker assemblies in, I've actually got to put the valves in. I almost forgot. And that's kind of important. So we're going to go ahead and get all the valves put in real quick. Um, pretty long, boring process. But I'm going to go ahead and get all the valves put in, and then we'll be able to do the rocker assemblies with the locked VTEC, and then uh, we'll be about ready. So I got all the valve springs and retainers in this one. So now I can go ahead and put the rocker assemblies in. But I also just realized I uh, don't have the other heads worth of springs and retainers. I hope they're here somewhere, but I'm not really sure what I did with them, to be honest with you. So I don't know. We'll have to find them. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and move on with this. Get the uh, uh, rocker assembly in there with the locked VTEC. And then we'll probably call it a night on this one. guys rocker arms are all all assembled put in torqued down now all i gotta do once i get the head on the engine i can uh set all the valve lash um i want to wait until it's actually on so that way you can rotate everything to top dead center um, but this head is completely done uh, i can put the valve cover on it now and just kind of let it sit wait for my other head to get done and then i can go ahead and put those on the block but for now i'm going to call it a night guys 
It has been a very long day of work on this thing. I've been working on it since about 8 a.m. It is now 9 p.m. So I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night on that one, guys. Um, so we will resume this probably tomorrow evening when I get off work and start working on the other head. All right, guys, we are back. Uh, it's been a couple days now. So the last time we were out here, I got that head all the way done. Um, for tonight, we're gonna go ahead and get this one all the way done. So I gotta start with getting the valve springs and retainers in it to hold the valves. Then we can move on to locking VTEC, rocker arms, all that good stuff. Um, so for now, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on getting the valves in and then uh, we'll see how far we can get. Alright guys, so I just got the second head all together. I still have to torque down the rocker arms, but everything else is all put together. So I'll get my torque wrench out and get those guys torqued down. And then, uh, yeah, we've got some fully built heads. Uh, so just to recap, these have um, Power Rev Racing flat face valves for high compression in them. They've got J35 cams. I've locked VTEC. Um, and they have got uh, SuperTech. Um, titanium valve springs and retainers in them so uh, and been port and polished so these things are ready to make some serious power guys uh, paired together with my j35 stroker bottom end over here underneath this cover so once we get all this stuff together um, I'm I don't really I honestly have no idea what to expect power wise but I'm really excited about it um, the next thing I'm gonna do once I get everything uh, or at least get the rocker arms torqued down everything like that um, I'm going to put the heads on the block and then uh, put some Play-Doh in one of the cylinders and then put the heads on, torque them down, put everything in time, turn the engine over one full revolution, take it all back apart, and then check the Play-Doh inside of the cylinder. Um, and that'll allow me to check the piston to valve clearance to make sure none of them are touching because these valves do stick up a little bit in the head. Let's see if I can show you. So these valves stick up like a millimeter or two right here. I don't know if you guys can see that kind of. Um, so I was actually worried about that and I thought they had to be cut to sit flush in the bottom of the head, but I ended up reaching out to uh, Sean at Power Rev Racing and he told me, no, that's completely normal. But they do get that question all the time. So if any of you guys have these valves and are installing them in your heads, when they stick up like that, it's completely normal. Just go ahead and lap them and put them in like that. And uh, yeah, full send. So now I'm gonna grab my torque wrench. I'm gonna get these things torqued down. All right, guys. So I just got everything all torqued down. Heads are good to go. Um, so now I gotta actually fix a problem on the old Audi over here. Uh, oh, also, you guys haven't seen this. Um, I ended up trading that dirt bike, that DRZ that I had. I ended up trading it for this. It's a Kawasaki Vulcan Mean Streak 1600. It's only got 5,000 miles on it. It's a, it's a bad dude. So but anyways, uh, now I gotta get to work on my Audi. Um, my uh, windshield windshield washer fluid light came on the other day and I went to fill it up with the windshield washer fluid and then got in the car, started it up, put a whole gallon in it, started it up, and then um, the light was still on. I tried to use the windshield washers and nothing came out, so I thought that was kind of weird. thought maybe it's an Audi thing, maybe it uses special windshield washer fluid. I don't know. So I tried to dilute it with a gallon of water, dumped a gallon of water in it, and I just washed it all drain right out onto my floor so either the hose came off or i got a hole in the reservoir i don't know so now i gotta jack this thing up take the wheel off and get up under there and see what the heck's going on so let's dive into it all right guys this turned out to be just a super easy fix that clear tube right there that's going on to that little fitting somehow just got disconnected from the reservoir so it was just hanging down and anytime the reservoir was filled up past that fitting it was just leaking everywhere so I just put it back on there I'm gonna take a zip tie and see if I can try to use it like a small hose clamp and just kind of hold it on there so it doesn't pop off again but yeah it was that simple nothing really to it all right guys so we just got that fixed got it topped off with uh, windshield washer fluid and now it's working great and it's not leaking anywhere so that's good 
So we're all good to go there. Heads are done. Um, so that's probably going to do it for this video, guys. Uh, once again, I appreciate all of you guys watching. I'm so sorry for the long laps and videos. I've just had a lot of stuff going on with this wedding coming up and just life in general. So just bear with me, guys. I'm trying to post as much as I possibly can, but it's just been really tough these last couple months. I haven't had any money for anything other than the wedding. I haven't had any time to do anything other than wedding stuff. So um, now it's starting to pick back up. I got all my stuff back so I can at least start making videos with the stuff that I have. So hopefully they'll be starting to be a more regular thing. Um, but I'm trying guys. I really am trying. So just bear with me. Um, but anyways, guys, I appreciate all of you guys watching. I do this all for you guys. Hopefully we can grow this channel into something great. So anyways, thank you for watching and we will see you next time.